This video is a response to a video made by Carnidis.org in which he asks people to make a video in which one is to propose a solution to the Lias Paradox. If you don't know what the Lias Paradox is, or need a reminder on some of its details, I have linked to his video in his channel, where he also goes through the different variants of the Lias Paradox. In the video I'm responding to, the variant called the Lias Revenge Paradox is featured. It goes, this statement is either not true or meaningless. If the statement is not true or meaningless, then it is true. And if it is true, then the statement is either not true or meaningless. No matter how the statement is classified, it seems that it is not true and true at the same time. A contradiction which seemingly is unsolvable is what's called a paradox. Before starting, we should note that there are three different kinds of paradoxes. The Lyers paradox is seen as an antinomious paradox by Carnides.org, and he has challenged his viewers who want to defend logic to find a way to make the paradox a falsitical one. To do this, one needs to show that the reasoning that has led to the paradox is flawed from a logical standpoint. To solve the paradox, one has to ask, why does the statement result in a paradox? I can think of three suspects. Truth, statements and logic. It could be the case that we have gotten something wrong about truth. Maybe truth isn't what we think it is. But such a notion also seems strange and unintuitive. Surely, if anything, we know what truth is. Perhaps some statements are different. Or maybe all statements lack truth value. It has been suggested that some statements self-referential maybe, shouldn't be allowed in logic. This doesn't seem to avoid the liar's revenge paradox, unfortunately, so maybe that isn't the solution we are looking for. If nothing else works, we can always change the rules of logic. The question then, however, would be how to make the new system work more generally, and not just when it comes to one paradox. To do such a thing, although it may work, seems counterproductive if our goal is to defend logic. It seems to me that our intuitions are the source of the problem and what has led to faulty assumptions. Our brains doesn't work the same way as electrical computers, something which is both a blessing and a curse. We often use shortcuts, heuristics, fallacies and intuitions in our thinking and it works most of the time. We rarely question it and often assume that since it worked the last couple of times, it will work this time, and the next as well. Since I think that revising logic is unnecessary, and as I think that just changing how statements work in logic is ad hoc, and doesn't go far enough, what I propose is that we form a new conception of truth. Truth is in philosophy commonly said to be a property of propositions which describe reality. This is what is called the correspondence sphere of truth and which I think is simple and has merit. Saying, for example, the car is red, under the correspondence theory, that statement will be true if and only if it is the case that the car is red. What is sought after is a new truth concept, which keeps the connection between truth and reality, and yet still meshes well with our intuitions and is relatively simple. The solution lies in formulating a new definition of truth. But, as I've indicated, the difference will be very subtle and will be more of a clarification than an overhaul of what truth is. The difference from the traditional view is that truth, in my view, is not a property of statements, but rather a function or use of statements. What this means is that statements cannot be true, which we soon will see have some interesting effects. If this works, then loss of logic can most likely be said to not be the cause of the paradox. 
and an ad hoc solution of excluding some statements won't be necessary. At the heart of this is the issue of semantics, about the meaning of things, and what I think is the case is that truth is connected to the meaning of propositions. Since meaning, in my view, is something that doesn't exist independently, but is more of a construct we create, I think that truth is part of that semantic construction. This can be seen by thinking about what a statement is. Sound. That is, vibrations in the air. Vibrations in the air cannot be said to have meaning by themselves. Moreover, if one thinks about the enormous amounts of different languages, Anyone actually believing that it do would have to believe that the same sound can contain more than one intrinsic meaning. Continuing to relate truth to correspondence with reality, we can make some conclusions. Piecing it all together, what one comes up with is a new notion of what truth is. There may be better formulations than these, but this is what I think we can say. Truth is the relationship that a proposition in the mind of a semantic agent which affirms a fact of reality has to reality. Falsehood then is the relationship that a proposition in the mind of a semantic agent which denies a fact of reality has to reality. The observant ones might have noted that truth and falsehood according to these definitions aren't incompatible. Statements can be made which both affirm and deny a fact of reality. This is not a problem for the law of the excluded middle, since statements which are both true and not true still aren't permitted with these definitions. It is to be noted that this relationship is an abstract or conceptual relationship, ergo it's not real per se. One could compare it to a function. Clocks don't actually measure time, but rather are used to measure time. More examples could be given, of course. Let us examine if and how this new conception of truth solves the liar's paradox. Or in other words, how does it work in practice? The liar's paradox, in its most simplest form, goes as follows. This statement is not true. From earlier, we can conclude that the statement in fact is not true. But this doesn't mean that the statement also is true. If you wonder how I figure, I'll explain why. While we can say that it is true, that the statement is not true, that doesn't describe the statement, but rather what's true. And since truth is not a property of statements, there is no contradiction. Recall also that we defined truth to be the relationship that a proposition in the mind of a semantic agent which affirms a fact of reality has to reality. But note that since this relationship isn't real, but a semantic construct, the statement does actually affirm a fact of reality. This statement isn't true, but it expresses truth by having a relationship that the propositions which affirms facts of reality has to reality in our minds. I want to make it clear, however, that I'm not saying that truth is just made up and nothing is really true. Rather, I'm saying that what is true is what the statement expresses. Uh, what isn't is the statement itself, and that is an important distinction. Let's look at the Boolean liar paradox, one that is quite interesting. It is stated, either this statement is not true, or 1 equals 2. Well, you could just say that the statement is not true by the same reasoning as before, it could be interesting to f explore some of the other aspects of that statement. Let us focus on the last part of that statement. 1 equals 2. If one were to say that, one would, making some assumptions about mathematics, deny a fact of reality. It would therefore be a falsehood that 1 equals 2. But 1 equals 2 wouldn't be a falsehood. The unintentional lie paradox is slightly more complicated than those before. In it, one is in a building with a lot of rooms and blackboards. And on all of them, it is written, the statement on the blackboard in room 101 is not true. 
When you go into room 101, you change the statement on the blackboard to the statement on the blackboard in room 101 is not true. While this is a problem for a solution which discriminates against self-referencing statements, I can easily say that all are not true. I also think that I can do the same when it comes to Yablo's Infinite Liars Paradox. Now for the final showdown against the Liars Revenge Paradox. In it we are given an instruction. Call whatever we classified the Liars Paradox to be and call it L and form a new statement. This statement is either not true or L. As you might remember, we answered not true on all the previous paradoxes, so in this case L is not true. This gives us the statement is either not true or not true. And once again the statement is not true. But maybe that's too simple, since that's only part of the answer. So let's up the difficulty and try some relevant alternatives. How about L being not intrinsically true, since we said that truth isn't a property of statements. It is true that the statement is not intrinsically true, so doesn't that mean that the statement in fact is true? No, the statement is still not true, as it isn't intrinsically true that the statement isn't intrinsically true. What about replacing L with doesn't express truth? The statement does express truth, but even if it didn't, the statement would still not be true. This solution can of course be objected to, and I look forward to learn of what others think can be objected against, but I would like to lay to rest some words that I personally had when I began thinking of the solution, and which I hope to show are problems which doesn't apply to it. The first objection which I want to lay to rest is that my solution is confusing or obscure. On the contrary, I think my solution meshes well with our everyday intuitions. Firstly, not much have changed, and there is nothing wrong with saying that statement is true instead of saying that statement expresses truth. Just as saying that begs the question, when you mean that raises the question, also is just fine. Secondly, is the fact that I think that I have actually, actually simplified rather than complicated matters. I've only made it so that statements follow the same rules as other objects. You wouldn't call objects shoes, trees, etc. true or false. And my point is, at least in part, that statements are objects and therefore is to be treated as ones. A second objection that I can think of is that a paradox might reappear if we change the context slightly, such as replacing the word statement with description of reality, for example. So what happens if we do that? We get this description of reality is either not true or L. One might think that since descriptions of reality are abstract or conceptual things, uh, that therefore they can be true or false. However, even if that were the case, I still think that a description of reality is not part of reality in either other capacity than a, as a part of a semantic agent's brain, which cannot as an object be true. Ergo, it's not true. Let us not be delayed by this issue, but have a look at the last objection. One could raise the question whether this doesn't have undesirable consequences for our use of deductive logic. It seems that deduction works on the principle that a true statement can be inferred from other true statements, but does this still work if statements express truth rather than uh, possess it? I don't think such a problem appears. One can still say that the truth expressed by the conclusion in a deduction follows from the truth expressed by its premises. I would like to thank several people for making this video possible. First, I would like to thank Carnides.org for presenting and explaining the large paradoxes 
and for issuing the shams which this video is a response to. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I would like to give my regards to Daniel Dennett, philosopher and author of the book Intuition Pumps and Other Tools for Thinking, which if I hadn't read, I would probably have lacked the insight and inspiration to make this video. I will provide links to the videos that I have used as references in the description, as well as linking to other videos which have uh, responded to carnides.org's challenge. Comment if you have questions, suggestions, criticism or anything else you want to say. Like this video if you want more people to view it. I hope you found this video interesting and or helpful. See you next time.